Hello guys, Rust 1.85.0 just released and there are some game changing features and updates that we'll talk in this video. There are tons of updates in this latest release of Rust including the language changes which simplifies the syntax or the rules for example uh, lifetime rules or you know changes to the scope of temporaries if left expression and there is tail expression unsafe there are some keywords made reserved uh, for example gen and then we have standard library changes cargo changes rust talk rust fmt new styles so it's kind of too much to cover in a single video so for this specific video we'll stick to the talk of the town which is async closures which is the most awaited feature in the rust community so in today's video we'll look at the uh, async closures in the prior version and then we'll update our rust and also see how async closures are game changer when it comes to using Rust programming language. And in the future videos, we'll talk about the important features or used in different videos on my channel and try to understand what Rust 1.85 has bring for us on the table. So without further ado, let's dive into it and let's begin. And as we start, there is a link to my Discord in description. So make sure you join it. First of all, as you guys can see, I'm still using Rust 1.83.0. In this video, we'll together run into some problems with using async closures on the prior versions, try to understand why do we need it, and then we'll update and see how does it work. So just to refresh your memory, we have been using such kinds of closures a lot in Rust. So closures, the anonymous functions, which captures the variables from its moment, and basic closure which is add we have result and we just uh, run it and as you guys can see it prints sum as five now this has been working since ages in rust now what if we want to use the async closures but we before going there let's talk about async block closures now to change this synchronous into async block closures we'll just wrap in async move and on top we'll just add tokyo main and then we'll just make our main async and we'll just await let's try to see if this works yes it works and it has been there and working in the prior versions as well but this is not async closure this is async block closure in language level sense it's a synchronous closure whose body is an async block so as you can see we just have our body as async block it's not truly following the async definition for example it's not like this async fn main that's async but if we do fn async main that's not truly async signature it's not following the async signature of the function so same here it's not like async xy and then x plus y it's just xy and then the block or the body is just returning an async block or a future so this is not truly async and this yes works in rust 1.83 or even any prior version that you guys are using where it's supported since now we know what we are talking here let's try to use the true async and let's see what happens so we just remove this async move and instead we want true async this is how we code our async functions as well right and we write as you can see as soon as we do we get this error saying async closures are unstable and we cannot use it in rust 1.83.0 so let's keep the code as it is and let's try to update rust version on our machine so just simply go to your terminal and just do rust up update stable and just run this command and let's wait for the update And there you go as you guys can see now we have the updated version the latest rust 1.85.0 on our machine and inside our text editor let's do a reload and we can also do a lsp restart okay so since our lsp just restart and now if we look at our code we don't have the error Let's even write out. OK, 
okay and now we try to run this and there you go we are able to successfully run the async closure on our machine while there are tons of benefits of using pure async closure which is released as part of rust 1.85.0 to its prior workaround which is the async block closure where you have a synchronous or a regular closure and you just return an async block or a future we'll talk about one of the important benefit to understand why do we even need pure async while we have already the one that returns the future. while using async block closures you always have to use the move keyword because x and y are borrowed here to your block so you have to always use the move keyword to pass the ownership because the async might outlive x and y so when you try to not use move and write as you can see straightforward we get an error saying async block may outlive the current function but it borrows x which is owned by the current function may outlive the borrow value so basically your async might outlive the borrowed value since it's using it so that's why we have to always use move and we have to move the ownership always and while while if we are using the pure async closures we don't have to even use the move we can just use async and that's it we just can work now with this pure async closures so this is just one of those benefits that we get by using the async closure we are not unnecessarily moving the ownership here and there and uh, you can also pass this as a uh, as a parameter to a function that accepts async closure or async function so tons of other benefits that we'll be talking while we use it so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys learn something new if you do like the video share with your friends i'll catch you guys in the next video with another interesting topic until then bye bye